My name is Brian Falkowski, and this is my original composition entitled Open Sesame. Brian Falkowski is an accomplished multi-instrumentalist who is beginning his solo career by producing his own music and videos. He pairs his original compositions with original visual art to capture the colors and shapes he experiences when he hears certain sounds, given his unusual gift of chromesthesia.
Being a performer and composer in DC has given me many opportunities to contribute my talents to different musical projects I've been involved in. Um, I'll often compose and arrange music for the groups I've played with, as well as for other musicians and bands who need these services. Uh, for example, in the last month alone, I've composed and recorded extensive horn parts for a studio engineer I know who produces music for various singers in Africa, uh, from places like Congo, Cameroon, and Nigeria. Um, I've recently arranged a hymn for a solo vocalist with a full choir and orchestra that will be performed and recorded sometime later this year. Uh, I composed and recorded a woodwind quartet arrangement for flute, two clarinets, and bass clarinet uh, on a Chick Corea composition for an upcoming album by one of the musicians I work with. Uh, I contributed some horn parts for another producer I know on his next album that mixes reggae and Chinese influences. Uh, and then of course there's also my own music. Over the years I probably composed at least 300 pieces of music of varying complexity, some of which I'm busy currently rearranging and recording myself as a large ensemble with myself as the only performer. So the, the different things I do are pretty diverse um, in terms of the styles and the needs of the music. After growing up in New York and then Pennsylvania, I came down to DC to do my undergrad in music at the University of Maryland in College Park, uh, where I studied with Chris Vidala, who was pivotal in my development as a musician on all the different instruments that I play. And I found this versatility was crucial to being adaptable to many different playing situations I would encounter in the real world, where it's sink or swim. Uh, toward the end of college, my senior year, I did a contract working on a cruise ship as a musician in Alaska. And then after graduating, I did another contract uh, on a ship which took me all over Europe for about three months. And in retrospect, I should have stayed on the ship uh, a little longer just to have the opportunity to travel more and see more places and continue doing that gig. But I decided to come back to DC because I still had a connection with some other musicians I knew from UMD and I was familiar with the music scene around DC. So at the time it made sense to use that existing network to start building a career as a professional musician in the area. And some of those connections uh, helped me get my first teaching jobs and gigs uh, around DC when I was literally starting from scratch. So the reason I stay in DC is because there's a great opportunity here just to play all different kinds of music. And I think that doesn't necessarily exist in some other places around the country. Um, just the ability to play so many different types of music. So DC's really a wealth of uh, opportunity in that sense. My favorite thing about being an artist in DC is that I've been very fortunate to benefit from the great diversity of talent and musical genres that exist here. Uh, since I've been playing professionally since 2007, um, I've collaborated with many different people and played all different kinds of music, including but not limited to um, jazz, classical, blues, funk, reggae, salsa, popular top 40 music, Middle Eastern music, Armenian music, uh, Indian classical, Brazilian, Irish, progressive rock, fusion, even some go-go, and uh, lots of different types of African music, uh, which I especially love because it's so diverse, uh, different people from different places in Africa have uh, very different approaches. For example, music from Ethiopia is totally different than music from Nigeria. And uh, I've experienced kind of working in both styles and genres. And all of these uh, genres have had an influence on my development as a musician and my own compositions, which I think are a true fusion of all kinds of different music from around the globe. So DC has different pools of musicians, and sometimes they overlap, 
Um, and there's always an opportunity to meet new people and learn something new. Um, so that's kind of what I enjoy about working in DC. I actually first composed my piece, Open Sesame, back in 2015. And I would say from 2013 until the end of 2019, I led a group of rotating musicians in a band I called Kaleidoscope. And I was very fortunate to have a weekly gig um, in DC for about six years, which was a great platform to consistently experiment and develop with my own music and my own compositional style. So most of the time the band consisted of myself on woodwinds and electronic effects. Uh, there was a guitarist who used a loop pedal to create different layers and textures of sound, and a drummer who added rhythmic variety and groove um, to the overall mix. I composed a lot of music during this time, and the, the music I wrote was specifically for the possibilities and limitations of that instrumentation. Uh, and Open Sesame was one of the tunes uh, that I wrote during that time. Uh, and then throughout the pandemic, I started taking some of my older compositions, uh, like Open Sesame, and I tried rearranging them by expanding the orchestration um, and adding different layers of instruments I could play. Uh, which is something that I couldn't really do in a live setting, but it was possible in my home studio. And the end result of the music I'm making is a lot closer to how I originally heard uh, the music when I first created it years ago. Finding ways to continue creating music during the pandemic uh, was definitely a challenge, but I think some new doorways were opened as a result for me. Uh, like many musicians, I lost practically all my gigs in terms of performing for a live audience. And obviously some people quickly adopted the live streaming technique to keep creating and connecting with an audience. But I instead chose to focus more inward and assess my own playing and music more in depth, um, working out certain deficiencies and areas that I needed to improve that sometimes go unnoticed in a live setting. So, uh, in the past year, I've studied a lot more advanced compositional and recording techniques, um, which has led me more, much more into the technology side of things, um, investing in recording software, microphones, um, even just practicing piano more. Uh, I'm not much of a piano player, but for a lot of music I'm making, I had to really practice uh, piano a lot more consistently to try to get my chops up uh, to be able to accompany myself uh, for a lot of the music I'm making. Um, so as a result, I think much of what I'm producing and making now is on a totally different level than it was a year ago. And um, just my skill set and all the different things I'm doing has improved in a positive way. So professionally, um, I've basically transitioned to doing mostly studio work and uh, fortunately I'm connected with enough other musicians uh, not just in DC but around the country who are still creating music uh, that I always have projects and things coming my way. Um, in addition for the past year uh, I've also been teaching my private students online which is another aspect of creating during the pandemic. Um, not only do I compose exercises and make sheet music that's custom made for each student's needs, uh, but I've had to find creative ways to keep them engaged and inspired when they can't physically play with other musicians in person, uh, which is a really hard place to be when you're first learning. Uh, that's not the way I learned. Um, I learned playing in school and actually sitting in a room playing with people next to me. So a lot of younger students uh, I think, you know, are struggling and missing out on uh, really what is the point of playing music uh, when you play with other people and hear the sound, not just uh, in a digital space, but actually in a physical space. So I think while the music and art community has been greatly affected 
Um, the pandemic, in certain ways, has also been a blessing in disguise because it's given me the opportunity to grow as an artist in some different ways without all the distractions of normal life. Um, that being said, I'm really hoping things do and are able to go back to normal soon and I can play music in person uh, for people again. Thank <laughs> you.